lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you guys are here for another fun video. I am Katie and today we are taking a little lighthouse trip. So I have been wanting to do this for a very long time and this is the Haunted Lighthouse Historian. So it is about time that we take a little lighthouse trip. So I decided to take a little journey up to Detroit, Michigan, which has several lighthouses actually, but I uh, only marked two of them off of my list this time. So there are more to come from Detroit and I will hopefully get to those very soon. But the ones that I visited uh, Tuesday, so today's Friday the 13th uh, of November 2020 and I went back on Tuesday and it was a wonderful, beautiful, sunshiny day. We've had, well, we had several days in a row of gorgeous sunshine between 70 and 80 degree weather for November, which is kind of unheard of for Ohio and Michigan. So typically at this time of year, we're looking at anywhere from 30 to 50 degrees and uh, some snow and uh, blustery, windy rain. And uh, <laughs> so these days they did not disappoint in the slightest. They were absolutely gorgeous. So I don't know what the deal is with mother nature. She's uh feels like she's lulling us into a false sense of security before she inundates us with a crazy ass winter, which who knows what's going to happen. I, I, all bets are off in 2020. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I am very grateful for the beautiful weather that she bestowed upon us for the last couple days. So in that, I decided I was not going to waste the day and took my little trip up to Detroit. Now, I live in Toledo and Detroit is our kind of our sister city. So she's only about 50 minutes away from Toledo going up north on I-75. And uh, it was, a, like I said, a beautiful day, an easy drive. There was a little bit of construction, but nothing crazy, especially around this time of year. Typically, they ramp up the constructions right before the snow comes for some stupid reason. But I had no, I had no issues the other day and I'm very grateful for that. But I took the trip to go see two lighthouses in particular. The first one I saw was at, um, Detroit's smallest state park and, um, it's Michigan's smallest state park to be completely honest with you and the first urban state park in the state of Michigan. So, uh, it was kind of a neat little honor that I got to, uh, visit this place and it was absolutely delightful. So it's located right on the Detroit River and uh, this is actually a really new lighthouse. This one was built in 2004. 2004? Isn't that crazy? I, I was looking up information about it when I got back and I was like, wait, it was built in 2004? It wasn't like picked up and moved there? No, it was, it was a build and they, uh, created it in 2004 when they kind of created the park. So it was originally called St. Aubin Park. And um, at that time, it was just a really small little area. It had a couple, you know, pavilions for coming down to the riverfront, eating lunch and things like that. But it didn't really have a whole lot to offer. And right next to the park was a marina. And so when the city was trying to, like, revitalize the area, they decided to combine the forces. They picked up the marina and this the... this neighboring park and created Tri-City, I'm sorry, Tricentennial Park. And so Tricentennial Park was there and they decided to do a little bit more upkeep and um, build onto it a little bit more. And so that's when the lighthouse was put in in 2004 and they renamed the park again and they changed it to the William G. Milliken State Park. And so uh, researching, I found William G. Milliken was one of Michigan's very prominent governors. I don't know what his affiliation was. I don't know what exactly he did for the city, um, but they really wanted to bestow the honor to him of creating and calling this, the park after him. So I thought that was really neat. And so that was my first stop. I parked my car down the road. There really wasn't any park parking. You, uh, there was, well, there was one area, but the, the parking was kind of creepy. They had this weird dip and I uh, was not trusting my car to try and go over this area to uh, park in this lot. So I ended up finding street parking a little bit ways away. And so I just walked my happy little self over there. And it was just so nice. It was windy, so windy, blustery even. Um, so all of the talking that I was trying to do over my videos 
got drowned out very quickly and uh, so you'll you'll see that I have to take all the audio out of my video and just put some music over the top of it because it was it was awful <laughs> to put it mildly I couldn't understand anything I was trying to say and it was that awful crackly wind sound that just makes it so unpleasant to watch so you'll uh, see my video footage here in just a minute that um, has had the audio stripped out and just some um, pleasant music put over the top of it but I really enjoyed this area of Michigan you can tell that they've been building up the area and that this state park really has a lot of love put into it so I was very very happy to be able to check it out like I said I was there earlier in the morning it was about 10 o'clock in the morning and I stayed there for about an hour and then decided to head over to my second location so I'm gonna show you the footage from the William G. Milliken State Park now and then when we come back I will discuss a little bit more about my second lighthouse so I will see you in a couple seconds Did you think about the William G. Milliken State Park Lighthouse? It was gorgeous, isn't it? And the really cool thing about this, since it is a new build from 2004, they built this lighthouse to be a replica of an already well-established 
well-known lighthouse in the state of Michigan, and that is the Towis Point Lighthouse. And so Towis is actually on the eastern side of the state over in Lake Huron, and it got its start back in 1853, I believe. Yeah, 1853 is when it was um, first lit, and so it is a beautiful location. If you've never been to Towis um, or Michigan in general, I recommend you make an addition of it to your uh, trip plans if you're ever trying to figure out a place to go vacation. Michigan has so much to offer. Not not just the lighthouses, but it is the state with the most lighthouses in it for the United States. So many people think it would be Maine or California, but that honor is bestowed on Michigan. So I feel very lucky that I am literally just, from my house, it's maybe a three minute drive to get to Michigan. So um, I feel very blessed that I am so close to the border and can go visit Detroit anytime I want to. But <laughs> I, I, I never do. I mean, I'm so close to it. And I, it was such a strange thing as I was driving there the other day. I kept thinking to myself, why don't I do this more often? I mean, I, I felt like a stranger in Detroit because typically if I'm going to Detroit, it was because I was going to a concert. And so I would get to town around 6, 630. And, uh, you know, there really wasn't any time to do any exploring. So Detroit and I had a very good time together. And, uh, I've, I've always loved the city. I've never had any issues in that city. And, uh, I just feel a, a love, a kinship for the city of Detroit. And uh, so it was a really good day overall. But as I was sitting at the William G. Milliken State Park, I was looking around and I noticed to my left that there was a uh, an island out there. And I remembered that Belle Isle was in Michigan and Detroit. And so I got on Google and I did a little bit of research and I found out that there was a lighthouse on Belle Isle. And I've looked into it years ago because I, I am one of those people that take um, trips via Google Maps. So I will, you know, put in a location and then I just take Google Maps around just to kind of sightsee and figure out what I can I can find, you know. And so years ago, I did a little tour of Belle Isle, but had never, like I said, been there before and uh, had completely forgotten that there was a lighthouse there. So this is actually the second lighthouse that was put in place on Belle Isle. I will talk about the first lighthouse in just a second, but um, it, like I said, it was uh, kind of a day of, I was on a whim. I thought, we'll go here, we'll go here, and uh, you know, see where the wind takes me. So Belle Isle was my logical next step to go see this next lighthouse. And uh, it's just a very quick drive over the MacArthur Bridge, and then you are on Belle Isle. And one of the cool things about Belle Isle that I guess I didn't realize before, you know, I started my uh, research into it is that Belle Isle is the biggest state park, like in a, in a city. So, you know how everyone talks about New York City and Central Park and how it's a big, beautiful, like city park. Well, Belle Isle is bigger than Central Park and it is, it is located right in the heart of Detroit and uh, right in the Detroit River. So, a lot of people are not aware of that, and uh, I just think it's such an amazing thing that it's so close to me. I mean, I, it took me an hour to get to Belle Isle, and it was, it was wonderful. So the thing with state parks in the state of Michigan, they are typically, you have to pay in order to get into them. Ohio is not like that. We have many state parks. All of them are free access to anybody that wants to come, but Michigan imposes this fee uh, every time you go to a state park, but the fees are very important because they go towards upkeep, um, you know, taking care of the land, and it also pays for any um, park rangers or any naturalists that they bring in um, to kind of help with the ecosystems and things like that. So the fees are very important, and I think it's a wonderful thing if you are looking for somewhere to donate some money or if you just want to... Um, I don't know, give back to Mother Nature. I think it's a really great idea because the fees, like I said, will go towards upkeep and the love and care that these state parks deserve. So the one day fee, if you want to go to a state park, I think is currently at $9 a day. And if you want to get a state park pass, it's $31. So really, if you think about going to a couple different parks in, you know, if you're taking a, a week long trip, 
and you want to hit several state parks in Michigan, the yearly pass is not a bad gig. So look into that if, like I said, you are looking for um, a way to give back or even if you're local and uh, you want to do like a, a Christmas present for somebody that's not really looking for um, material things, I think that a state park pass would be a really great fun idea. So it's almost Christmas, guys. If you're thinking about out-of-the-box ideas, that would be a really good one. So anyway, but uh, Belle Isle is really gorgeous. And growing up, you know, the Belle Isle used to be um, what's known as Detroit's playground. You know, people would go to Belle Isle to swim and to fish and to play games and just to kind of relax away from the hustle and bustle of Detroit. And so you could feel that when it, when you kind of go over the MacArthur Bridge and then you get to the um, the location where you have to pay to get in. Uh, when I went in November, it was actually closed down for the season. So the, the thing with the state parks is it's only really a, a pay situation if you go in peak season. So it's usually like mid spring to very late fall is the peak season time. And so I think that that makes sense because, you know, if you're going to the state parks when it's warm and sunny out, you have more options of things to do. You can go swimming, you can go canoeing, you can go kayaking, you can um, do all of these fun um, things there. And so when it gets colder, you know, in November, those uh, options of things to do kind of dwindle down. So they uh, take away the fee at that point, And so it's kind of free to access. And so that was my case. I didn't have to pay to get onto the island at this time. And uh, it was just a really weird situation, though, first of all. So when I went over the the bridge and I got pulled around to go through the location where you would typically pay, there, it was like a three-lane highway. And... I was very confused at first because I kept going, where, where's the other, where's the other drivers and what, what's happening? But it is all like a one way road that kind of loops around the entirety of Belle Isle. So when you go over to Belle Isle, don't be confused because I certainly was, I was like driving in the left hand lane going, am I even supposed to be over here? It was very strange, but I, I figured it out eventually as I'm driving along. And uh, I did stop and take some video at a very weird thing. And uh, I will show you that here at this very moment. So I'm like stopping in the middle of the road here. I'm sure that this is a road, but I found this shelter house that looks like it's been, I don't know what it looks like, but that that's insane. So I don't even know where I'm going at this point. I'm just kind of uh, driving around in Belle Isle to see what I can find. And uh, I'm gonna put you back on my cradle here. I'm still trying to figure out what that is. Like, if is it a, uh, a shelter house that burnt down and then they tried to quarantine it off with, with um, boards and they just stopped midway or I don't know. Or was it decorated for Halloween? I don't know. I don't know. It's just very weird. But I had to slow down and take a video of it because I just kept going, what am I looking at? But Belle Isle was kind of cool. Like if you are from Ohio, if you've ever been to the center of our state, there is a little town called Marblehead that's out in a peninsula into the Lake Erie. And uh, right next to Marblehead, kind of nestled into it, is a little town called Lakeside. And Lakeside is a pay-to-enter kind of a thing. So much like the Michigan State Parks, if you want to go into Lakeside, it's kind of a upper crust area, you know, where you have to pay to get into this area. Um, and it's the same thing where you can access boating and fishing and there's different like um, perks for going in. They have a performing arts place where sometimes they'll bring in, um, I know they've had comedians, they've had musicians that come and perform. And so um, it's a really nice little town, but Belle Isle felt very much like Lakeside to me. So I could tell that in the peak time in the summer, they probably have a pile of things going on. It looked like they had a couple different buildings that maybe house um, shops, maybe restaurants, but everything at that point was closed down. There really wasn't anything going on. I was one of maybe 12 other cars that I saw the entire time I was on Belle Isle, um, and they were 
kind of passing me as I was driving very slowly, <laughs> trying to figure out what I was doing. Um, but it was a really cool place. So I recommend if you have an afternoon, if you're from Toledo local area and want to get away and see something fun and unique, I definitely recommend Belle Isle. It was so neat. But let's talk about the lighthouses quickly. So the Belle Isle Lighthouse is actually called the William Livingstone Memorial Lighthouse. And William Livingstone was a very prominent man who, you know, was born in the 1800s. He was actually born in Canada. His family moved down to Detroit. And so he turned himself into a Detroit native, grew up there, and became very, very prominent in several different industries. So I know that he was prominent in banking, in publishing, and in transportation. He kind of revolutionized the way we did shipping, especially on the Great Lakes. And so because of his his uh, involvement in shipping, he also had a huge hand in building the canals, um, especially the one that's up in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, which is in the Upper Peninsula. Um, and it's about a 1300 mile little strip. And um, he it was very, it wasn't 1300 miles, 1300 feet, I think. Let me get my paperwork again. Da, da, da. Yeah, 1300 feet miles. <laughs> anyway, so he was very prominent in making sure that the canals were built and kind of revolutionized the way that we did shipping. So, and the, the, the Sault Ste. Marie Canal is a huge area for trade and travel. Um, it kind of rivals, you know, the Panama Canal in the amount of people that are kind of going in and out every single year. So it was a very cool thing to kind of read up about this guy and um, figure out, you know, why he was so well loved that they would name this Memorial Lighthouse uh, after him. And so it was a really cool thing to see. It's a very unique lighthouse, as you're about to see. Um, it is made out of Georgian granite, and it was $10,000 to build initially back in 1930, I think. Let me look it up. Yeah, so it was built on April 8th, 1930 is when the last kind of pieces were put together. And then it was dedicated in October of 1930. And the dedication date was actually five years after the death of William Livingstone. So they uh, kind of did that on purpose to make sure that they could have a proper dedication for the memorial. And it very much reminded me of, if you've ever been to Putin Bay, Ohio, um, there is a national park on Putin Bay, and there is a huge monument, and it's called the Perry's Victory Monument, and it is a huge granite tower. So, like I said, it was very uh, similar to me to the to the William Livingstone Memorial, but half the size. I mean, the one on Perry's. Uh, um, Putin Bay is massive. This one was tall, but it wasn't anywhere near as tall as that one. It's only 47 feet tall. And uh, it was kind of encased in a wrought iron fence. And so when I was looking up, you know, information about the lighthouse, um, I found out that there was a lot of vandalism that happened with this lighthouse back in the 80s. So vandals in 1980 kind of broke in, stole two of the four lanterns that were placed in the, the Memorial Lighthouse, um, defaced it with graffiti, and were just general shits because people have a tendency of being little shits for some reason. I will never explain it, never understand it, um, why you want to go and deface something that is a part of history. Um, I don't know. I, it's, that's not part of me. I always feel like an old lady when I talk about stuff like this, but it really irritates me. I understand freedom of expression and I love art, but I will never understand tagging up and defacing a lighthouse or a, a historic building or anything along those lines. So I was walking around that. <laughs> it was very cranky when I got to the uh, graffiti that was on one of the sides of the building still. So you'll hear me as I'm walking around the building. You'll, you'll see I got a little upset about that. But forgive me, just my old lady was popping out for a little while. But it is a beautiful lighthouse. But like I said earlier, it is not the original lighthouse from um, 
the Belle Isle area. So Belle Isle had a lighthouse that was built back in 1881 uh, and it was a red brick dwelling. So I'm going to post a picture of that here and look at that beautiful thing. Isn't it gorgeous? So it was a house for all intents and purposes with a beautiful light attached to it. And the lighthouse was kind of taken care of by one keeper for about 40 years. And this is really unheard of because typically keepers would be kind of moved around a lot. You know, they'd be stationed at multiple different lighthouses. A lot of the times light keepers were young, unmarried men, and so they had no problems kind of moving around um, to kind of take care of what areas needed them at the time. But this one was housed by one man and his name was Louis Feet or Louis Feet. Um, I'm guessing it's Louis Feet, um, because it sounds like a very French last name. It's F-E-T-E-S. So if I'm mispronouncing that, I'm very, very sorry. I always hate mispronouncing words, but I think it's Louis Feet. But he was the, the lighthouse keeper, like I said, for 40 years. Uh, and he moved in there in, I think, 1886. And three years later, he moved in his bride in 1889. And at that point, they had six children. They raised all six children in this lighthouse. And I personally can't even imagine having that kind of a childhood, growing up in a beautiful place like Belle Isle, having, you know, the river as my playground. And uh, it's, I just feel like it was probably a wonderful life for everybody involved. And I really feel that way because the lightkeeper was so attached to this place. Um, when the lighthouse eventually, like they all do, uh, became automated and he lost his job. He took it very hard. So automation came in in 1930 and Louis passed away the following year in 1931. And many people think it's because uh, he died of a broken heart, you know, from all of those wonderful years spent in this one location. Um, to lose that, I, I'm sure it just absolutely broke him, gutted him. And I uh, I just, oh, my heart bleeds for, for those people that had that historical significance. Um, and then to see these things crumble or be demolished. And unfortunately, this lighthouse did get demolished to make way for the Coast Guard building on Belle Isle. So that happened in 1941. So right as World War II is going on, this is happening to kind of build up the Coast Guard. And I think that it was probably, you know, a direct reasoning with the war. They wanted to make sure that all of their bases were covered. So the lighthouse was demolished. The Coast Guard building was put there. Now, another unique thing about this lighthouse was since it was a brick red structure, there really wasn't a way to um, add on to the lighthouse without, you know, adding an exorbitant amount of money to the process. So as the island started building up, and the trees around the, the lighthouse started building up, it started to hinder the light's ability to kind of get out into the river to do its job. And so many people were wondering if the light was even feasible to keep it there anymore. So they devised a plan, and I've never seen this with another lighthouse. I think it's very unique. But they ended up taking the lantern out of the lighthouse itself, and they put it on a, like a flagpole or like it looked like the mast of a ship. And so they would bring up the light, you know, in the evening so that the light could shine and it was out further so that people in the water could see the light. And then in the morning they would take the light down. Um, but like I said, so unique. I have never heard of another lighthouse doing that before. And it, it's certainly possible, but um, I just thought that was such a fun thing to read about. And uh, the pictures of it are incredible. And then I found out after I came home that that light pole is still available. So if you go to the Coast Guard building that was built over top of the old lighthouse, they still have that that flagpole with the light, the lantern kind of attached to it. So I didn't notice it when I was driving around. I'm kind of bummed that I missed that. So I guess I just have to go back to Belle Isle and check more of it out. But uh, it was kind of kind of a unique thing. Like I said, I'd never heard of anybody doing that with a lantern, a light, you know, a lighthouse's lantern. So I thought it was very cool. But 
History is so amazing, and this this place was really, really cool to check out. You do have to kind of park and then walk to the lighthouse. So I have experienced this a couple times, and people that usually go on these trips with me hate me forever because I want to go walk to the lighthouse. And another lighthouse we just recently went to um, that was about, you had to take like a five-mile walk to you know round trip to get to the lighthouse and then to come back so uh this one was not nearly as bad it was only maybe a half a mile there and back but it was in a sandy area sandy doomed area and um but definitely worth the walk i think because this lighthouse is such a cool unique find so i'm going to show you the footage from that now and uh i'm going to leave it at that so i hope that you guys enjoy this video that you've learned something new um, that maybe you didn't know before about lighthouses maybe i've inspired you to take a trip and go see a lighthouse near you but more lighthouse history to come ladies and gentlemen i guarantee it and uh if i find any haunted history or anything about that surrounding the lighthouses i will definitely be sure to add that too. I did not find any historical uh, spooky history with either one of these lighthouses. I'm, I think that there's probably maybe some haunting going on at the Coast Guard station just because um, that location housed so much love and joy. I think maybe some residual is probably hanging out at the Coast Guard. So I don't think they've ever had anything bad happen. Um, maybe just some uh, I don't know. Maybe they've heard some laughter or I don't know, something like that. But no, nothing claiming that, so I can't really make a, a direct claim um, in my video as such. But lighthouses are so cool and they do have so much history and I really enjoyed looking up these two. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you like this stuff, if you want to hear more about lighthouses, you know I've got plenty of information to share. Um, hit the like button, subscribe to me if you are not a subscriber yet so that you can be alerted every time I make one of these super awesome videos and I will see all of your lovely faces in my next video. Okay guys, so I found the lighthouse and this is not an easy lighthouse to get to for some reason. You park and then you've got to walk through the sandy dune-ish area to get there. But it looks awesome so I'm very excited. I'm going to turn this around so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. So it's really out here with a pile of nothing else. I'm going to try and watch where I'm walking so I don't twist my ankle. But um, yeah, it's really quite cool. And the light is on right now. It keeps shining, so. Okay, I'll get back on here when I get a little bit closer. It looks like somebody else is here with their dog, so I will be back shortly. Okay, lovies, so here we are at the Belle Isle Lighthouse. And this is quite a unique light, isn't it? It kind of has the look of the uh, um, the monument on Putin Bay. Very tall, statuesque. The light, like I said, is on. I don't know if it's just continually on all the time or what the deal is, but it does say William Livingstone on the light. So I think I remember reading about this place at one time and William was the guy that kind of got the money together to put this in place. But isn't that so cool? You can't get close to it because they've got this, well, as you can see, wrought iron fence, but still really, really neat. Let's see if I can go around behind it. You can see over here, the river. Oh yeah, this is all kind of not completely mown down, but mown down enough that you can kind of walk around the light. Yeah, I really missed out. I think if I'd have been here two weeks ago, it would have been absolutely gorgeous, but 
maybe three weeks ago actually since Michigan started changing their colors much quicker than Ohio did but still oh there's a plaque on the side of it I don't know if I can get up close enough to see what that says I'm gonna zoom in a bit says William Livingstone again but yeah all the other wording is kind of lost I think I'll try and see if I can get a picture of it and see if that will help but yeah that's really really quite neat like I said I've not seen another another lighthouse like this except for Perry's Victory Mon Monument over on Putin Bay so very very cool so if you ever wondered what the Belle Isle lighthouse looked like there you go she's a beaut so I think that the wind has died down enough. I should be able to talk without there being too many issues, but um, that is the Belle Isle Lighthouse. So I think that this is the only one on the island. I'm going to do a quick search when I get back to my car just to make sure that I don't miss anything, but I wanted to see this one for a long time. I've Google mapped over here many a time, <laughs> but have never seen it in person. So today was the day, and it is a darn beautiful day at that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of Michigan Lighthouses, and I will see your lovely faces later.